A primary challenge with the three co-products discussed in this video is shelf life. Although the rate and extent of spoilage is determined by ambient air temperature, spoilage will usually initiate on the surface of piles of these wet co-products within 3 to 14 days when exposed to air. Condensed corn distiller solubles will also spoil when stored in liquid bulk tanks at a relatively warm temperature. Losses due to spoilage can be minimized or avoided when the product is fed relatively quickly, as is the case in most feedlots. However, smaller feedlots and cow-calf operators may not be able to feed large quantities quickly enough to avoid spoilage and loss. Furthermore, cow-calf operators may only want to use co-products during certain times of the year. Feedlot cattle inventories significantly impact the availability and consequently the price of ethanol co-products throughout the year. As can be seen in the graph, cattle on feed numbers may fluctuate greatly across months, but the trend is for fewer cattle to be on feed during the mid to late summer. As a result, the demand and price of ethanol co-products is usually the lowest during this same time period. This creates an opportunity for seasonal users of ethanol co-products to purchase the commodity during periods of lower prices and store it for use at a later date. The overall process for storing wet co-products is very similar to ensiling either corn silage or high moisture corn. It's critical to exclude the oxygen regardless of the type of storage facility used. Ethanol co-products are acidic with a pH around 4.0 to 4.5 and do not undergo a typical ensiling anaerobic fermentation process. Theoretically, storage can occur indefinitely with no losses if all the oxygen is excluded. There are numerous types of facilities and structures that may be used to store ethanol co-products. One method of storage incorporates the use of plastic ag bags. Use of this method does require access to bagging and mixing equipment. However, producers wanting to store larger quantities of co-products may utilize bunker storage. If producers don't have access to concrete bunkers, then round bales or other less permanent structures can be utilized to construct temporary bunkers. Producers should take many factors into account when considering storing ethanol co-products by mixing with forages. The primary reason for incorporating the use of forages is to add bulk and help dry the mixture for compaction and storage. Wet distillers grains plus solubles and condensed corn distiller solubles will not compact during storage without the addition of forages. Dry, low-quality forages are the most logical choice to add bulk to co-products. Low-quality forages, such as grass hay, wheat straw, or corn stalks are recommended as they require lower amounts to be mixed with co-products and are typically less expensive relative to other higher-quality forages, such as alfalfa. For the most effective incorporation with co-products, low-quality forages should be ground through a tub grinder using a 5-7 to seven inch screen. As the size of the grinding screen decreases, the resulting forage particle becomes smaller and it's easier to exclude air during the storage process. Forages and co-products can be incorporated together using a mixer wagon or feed truck or by simply mixing with a skid steer or bucket loader. The following table provides the minimum mixtures required for grass hay, alfalfa hay, and wheat straw when combined with wet distiller's grains plus solubles. It provides example calculations for converting from a mixture of two feeds on a dry matter basis to an as-is basis and can be used for any combination of feedstuffs. The percentage on an as-is basis are required for actually weighing the feeds into your mixer. The percentages on a dry matter basis were the minimal amounts required of these different feeds to store in bags under pressure.